Hi, it's nice to see you all here tonight. Um, I'm excited to share this with you because I fell into it accidentally, but it has been one of the greatest experiences of my life these last 22 years. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about how it came about. Um, I did Reiki for eight years on faith because I really don't feel energy, but the people said something was happening and I like to help and so I continued. And then one day all of a sudden I start getting information. And then all of a sudden it changed. Instead of doing Reiki, sounds were coming from me and my hands were moving and I was like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> so I continued with that. And then about a year later, my guide said to me, someone gave me a book about John of God in Brazil. And uh, my guides, I got all the way to page five before my guide said, we want you to go. And I said, well, I hadn't really thought about going to Brazil, but if you'll take care of me, I will. And I did. That was in 2002, a year after this other had started happening. And what I discovered there is that um, the mediums were doing amazing things. And I just, I realized because in the rooms where the work was being done, they too were making noises. And I went, oh, maybe I'm a medium. <laughs> so that's how that came about. And my guides wanted me there for extended periods. And so over the last 22 years, I've been going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And during that time, I've spent well, I visited five different centers. One of them is very similar to the one of the John of God Center, which is where I went to originally. And then there are three or four other different types that I'll speak about tonight. But what fascinated me was the fact that this was happening in Brazil. And the mediumship that they do there is very different than what we think of as mediumship here. Um, they really have a lot more understanding of mediumship and the potential and what it can do. And part of this is because <laughs> Brazil is a, a country of mediums. It absolutely is. Um, it started out partially because when, so when Brazil was settled, what happened is um, there were a lot of indigenous people and then the Europeans, the Portuguese came in and the Portuguese started um, sugar plantations and they needed um, workers. So they went to Africa and brought the workers in, okay? Well, even though we ha had work, uh, black slaves come here, 13% of the slaves that came out of Africa came to the U.S. 35% of the slaves that left Africa went to Brazil. So what we're looking at is two indigenous cultures coming together with a few, few Europeans sprinkled in. So that's what they had there. And because the indigenous people always worked with spirits, always were um, aware of the ancestors and all the rest of it, what they ended up doing is they decided that they would just hang on to what they had brought with them but they had to hide it because the Portuguese were not interested in knowing any of this. So they did something called syncretization, which is where you take a Catholic saint and Mother Mary becomes Yemanja, an Orisha from Africa. And so that's how they did all of it. But they kept their traditions. The other part of it that is interesting about Brazil is like we were settled by the Puritans. They came to the U.S. because they wanted freedom of religion. In Brazil, the people who went to Brazil were young men, unmarried. And of course, when they get there, who, what do they want? They're looking for a woman. So once again, we've got the races mixing. And so that's how Brazil became a nation of mediums because the medium mystic, um, everyone's a medium. It's an inherent quality. And so the mediumship just grew and grew and grew because of the fact that there so many indigenous people were there hanging on to what they knew and practicing it. So that's sort of the basis for how Brazil became a country of mediums. What became interesting after a point was, <clears throat> excuse me, the Europeans, um, were interested in spiritualism. And I'll back up for just a moment and exp 
uh, tell about this because there are different beliefs about spirits and with mediumship what we're doing is working with spirits. When I say spirits, I mean beings. It could be ETs, it could be spirits, it could be things that I have no idea what to call them. But this is what the unseen are the ones that are being worked with by mediums. And so there are beliefs about spirits and for, for example the Christians believe there are only bad spirits and so they say avoid anything having to do with psychics or mediums or what have you. There's spiritualism which was big about a hundred years ago or so both in Europe and the US. The spiritualists are still big in England and Australia and their belief is there are only good spirits. So we've got a belief in only bad spirits, a belief in only good spirits. In Brazil, they know that they're both. <laughs> <laughs> and because they know this and they had the awareness, they decide to learn how to work with them. Okay, and so that's what's happening. And because already they had this indigenous, uh, shamanic sort of a culture, they're already naturally doing some of it. The spiritualists movement became a big deal in the 1800s. And it really took over in this country to a very great extent. Um, and there was a Frenchman who was very highly educated. He had his PhD in medicine. He spoke five different languages. He was both a banker and an educator. And in his 50s, he became interested in seances. He wanted to know what was going on. And because of his training, what he did is he decided, I'm going to experiment here. He made a list of 1,000 questions. And he had 10 mediums, none of whom knew each other. And he asked them all these 1,000 questions. And then he took notes on everything that he was told. Out of that came uh, five different books. The Medium's Book, The Spirit's Book, um, and uh, three others. And the Medium's Book and Spirit's Books are the ones that you know people look to for information, basically. And what happened is he was French and he went by the pen name of Alan Kardec. And you'd think that this would take over in Europe and France. And it did for a little while, but it didn't last. However, when it arrived in Brazil, because of it being a country of mediums, it did become of interest to people. And so what came out of that is the religion called Spiritism. And that's where the medium's book and the spirit's book and these other books talk about this and have a lot of teachings and information that's very helpful. And by the way, the medium's book and the spirit's book are both available free online. There are PDFs. You can look at all of this and other things online. <coughs> at any rate, <coughs> spiritism comes to Brazil and the Brazilians suddenly say, oh, we can work with this. And so they did. And what they did is they took it to a whole other dimension. They have so many different ways of doing mediumship, um, from psychography, which is writing, a spirit either speaking or actually moving the uh, hand of a person. That is one of the ones. Um, incorporation. They incorporate the spirits and let the spirits do the work of the healing, whatever is needed. Um, they also have them. Uh, speak through them and the voices will change so that you don't even recognize the person. Um, just any number of different ways that they work with mediumship. Along with this, what they recognized is because they had these thousand questions that had been answered and because they were experimenting with all of this, they started learning interesting things about what the spirits could do to help them and they learned about what they call mediumship problems. Because what mediums are is, well, we're, we're all mediums. It's an inherent human trait. However, it's a question of sensitivity. And the most sensitive are the ones who are most easily damaged, but they're also the best mediums. So then we run into mediumship problems. And so what the first thing they had to do is figure out how do we make use of our mediumship and deal with these problems? And so that is one of the things that they work with. They call it mediumship problems and they have ways of working with it. 
some of the things that happen in mediumship problems is spirit obsessions and just a number of other things. But it's when the spirits actually come into the body or come close to the person and because they're sensitive, they sense it, they feel it and what have you, and it really unsettles them. So the question then becomes how do we do fix this? And partly it's uh, because of their sensitivity and their openness and so they have to learn how to be able to ground and connected and really able to deal with what's coming in and through. So that's mediumship problems. That's a lot of what is done at these centers. I'll give you an example um, for those of you who haven't been there. The John of God Center has a medium sitting in a chair, but what he also has is a current of people sitting in rows, just like you all are, okay? Everyone's sitting with their eyes closed uh, and their arms and legs and everything uncrossed so that the energy can move through everyone. And this energy is what the spirits use to help heal the people and to work with their mediumship problems and so many other things. This is where the miracles come from. But a lot of it is just the sitting in current. So much can happen just as people are sitting in the current. They also do psychic surgeries there. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't know how many of you know anything about this, but the psychic surgeries are done by spirit doctors. And spirit doctors are the ones who come through and work through the medium and just come through. They don't even have to work through the medium. For example, um, you can go in and have a surgery at the Casa, where John of God is, and all you do is you go and sit in a room and the spirits who are there come and do the surgery without anyone in a physical body having anything to do with it. They just do it for you. Then you go home, you're in bed for 24 hours, and you get up going, wow. Um, so this is one of the ways that they work. But they're also working at helping people heal, helping, helping mediums heal because besides their problems, they also have a lot of physical ailments and just any number of things that need to be healed along with the mediumship problems. So that is part of what's being done when they're sitting in current and doing these surgeries and what have you. I can tell you some interesting miracles that have occurred, just so you get an idea about this. Um, one of them was a woman who had ALS and she, was so committed to going to the casa, even though they said, this is one of the illnesses we cannot heal. They cannot, for some reason, nerve problems, they cannot heal it, okay? But she kept going anyway. She had faith and she thought, I'm, I'm going to continue. So she came time after time after time to the casa. And e each year she was getting worse and worse and weaker and weaker. And finally she was, you know, she was in a wheelchair. She just really couldn't do anything. And she knew that this last trip was going to be the last one because she just wasn't strong enough. So she went to the casa one last time and, you know, they did what they did and she went home and she said, I need to go on hospice. And so she called up um, the folks, and the medical people and said, I need to go on hospice. And they said, well, you can't unless you have a doctor see you. She said, I have been to five doctors. They have all diagnosed ALS, you know. Do I really need, and they said, yes. Sorry, this is the way it works. Mm -hmm. So she went to a doctor and he said, oh, you don't have ALS. You have, and I can give you medication and you'll be fine. And she was. When the people came to pick up all the equipment, the wheelchair and everything else, they told her, you are the only ALS patient we've ever had who was still alive when we picked up the equipment. Mm. Uh. These are the sort of miracles that happen at the Casa. These are the sort of miracles that the beings can do. I ask the energies to be here with us tonight. Actually, I've been asking them to work here in this space for the last couple of days. 
Um, so I'm just going to take a moment and ask you all to just close your eyes, relax a little bit, and see if you can feel anything. Okay, whenever you're ready, open your eyes again. And I, we won't talk about it right now, but at the end I'd like to know, you know what people felt or anything else. Um, what I'd like to talk about right now is some of the other ways that they work with the spirits in Brazil at some of these other centers that I went to. Because after being at the John of God Center, they took me to the south of Brazil um, to a place where um, they do what's known as Umbanda. And Umbanda is another Brazilian religion because spiritism is actually a, a, a known religion in Brazil. Spiritism and, and Umbanda are both um, seen as religions in Brazil. And these two work in different ways, except that Medium Joao from the Casa actually trained in Umbanda. So they do actually work together at the same time. Um, in Umbanda, what the people are doing is incorporating spirits. It's not just one person like Medium Joao incorporating the spirit. It's all of the mediums who are working incorporating the spirits. And what they do there is they do healings on people, a lot of healings, and they do consults, same as they do at the Kaiser. <coughs> so it's a very similar thing, but you've got an entire group of people, all of them incorporating these spirits and having the energies work through them and what have you. And it is so much fun. I can't tell you how much fun it is to actually incorporate the spirits and let them work through you. It's a wonderful feeling and it's really healing. Um, that is one that is sweeping South America. The young people particularly are so enthusiastic about this because it is fun to do, but it's also a service work because everything about these Brazilian <coughs> religions is about being of service. The, the two main tenets are belief in reincarnation, which you need to have if you're going to work with spirits, and being of service. These are the two concepts that are really important in these two religions, and this is what they do. They're being of service all the time. They're working on people and helping people and providing um, the service for them. <clears throat> There's another aspect of this which is about healing. And once again, it ties into the mediumship problems because what mediums will have is, I mentioned, obsessions and <coughs> spirits uh, affecting them. And they can hear the spirits. They know the spirits are there. They can feel the spirits. So this is a real problem, especially in our society where we think there is something very much wrong which is true on one hand, but at the same time, it's something that's happened naturally. And if we accept it and look at it and know what's going on, then we can deal with it, as opposed to saying, well, we'll ha we don't know what to do, so we'll give you some drugs, which doesn't fix the problem. And at the same time, it can create other problems. And so the person gets stymied. They get sort of stuck there. They're on medication, but they don't feel quite right. And you know things are not working the way they're meant to. Well, because they're aware of this in Brazil, what they do is they work with mental illness. I can't remember the number, but there are, I can't remember the number, hundreds of mental psychiatric hospitals in Brazil. And what they're doing in these hospitals is they are healing mediums. They're, they're discovering ways to heal them more and more and more. And there are ways to do it because the spirits work with them and because a lot of mediums can see what's going on, they can give feedback explaining, you know, what's going on with the person. And so they work with this there. Depression, which is a great problem in this country, in Brazil, I have worked with a number of people, one or two sessions, suicidally depressed, totally fine. It's spirits who have attached to the people that are causing the depression in so many cases. And once these spirits are removed, the person is no longer depressed. They change overnight into the person that they can be. 
And this is so much of what this work is about. It's about removing the spirits that have attached to the people. If you can remove the spirits, then you can see what else is going on. And that's what they have perfected, means of removing these spirits. So um, they call them disobsessions. And they have works where they do disobsessions on the people. In one of the centers I was in, there's a small town very close to the Casa, a couple of hours away, um, that was created or, or started in the early 1900s by people who were, um, had been trained by a very famous Brazilian medium of that time. He died in 1917, I think. But they had been trained by him, and they decided to move to this area. Um, I'll explain a bit about the area. In Brazil, right where the center is, it is a 100-mile diameter crystal below, below the land. And so that's why so many mediums have been called there. That's why so many centers are there, because of this crystalline energy, which is really helpful for the spirits to work with. In this case, it was a group of spiritists who moved to this area and created a town called Palmelo. And in Palmelo, it was spiritus. And you can look Palmelo up and Google it, and it will tell you about the spiritus center in Brazil, where there are more spiritus living than anywhere else on the planet. Well, I ended up going there and living there for a while. And what they do is disobsession work. Uh, they do it through what they call passes. And passes are where they do energy very much like this. This is actually what they're doing. And by doing this, they're clearing the aura. I'll call it aura for lack of a better term. But they're clearing the aura to rebalance the person. Okay, That's one of the ways that they do it. And people go, and they go to Palmelo, and they're there. And so they go for a while, and they um, will receive healings of that sort. But they're also just gradually, some of them have so many problems, it's a gradual process. So they keep going back, and they keep sitting there, and they keep receiving the passes. And so many times they're told, you're a medium, go to work. <laughs> because by working, this is another way to uh, heal uh, mediumship problems. When you help others, you're also being helped. And so they tell so many people who come there for help, you're a medium, go sit and work. Okay? So this is part of what's going on too. It's also part of what the current's about because everyone sitting in current with their eyes closed is not only receiving the healing that they need, but they're also helping to heal everyone else. We're all working together uh, to help e heal each other. So that and Palmelo, they also have some interesting things because it would be it's really interesting to go there because at the Casa when I first went, I told you they were making noise and I was making noise, so okay. But then after a while so many foreigners started coming, they stopped making noise at the Casa, okay. But you go to Palmelo, they're still making noise. <laughs> and it's really interesting to hear them because they're sitting in there and all these noises are coming out. And then someone will incorporate a spirit and the spirit will start saying, oh, where am I? What's going on? Help me. Da, da, da. You know, I mean, this whole thing is going on the entire time. You're s sitting there going, wow, this is very interesting. Um, but this is how they work there and they do really good work about disobsessions and helping people to get beyond their mediumship problems. Um, I'm just trying to think of some other situations. Um, yeah, the one that comes to mind most is the fact that people are depressed. Depression is such a big problem. The other problem is obsession, where a spirit is attached to the person and the spirit does not want to let go. And these are disobsessions. And they can be anything from, you know, very mild to very severe. And it just depends on the situation. I remember there was one woman who, she and her husband ended up moving within Brazil to the Casa because they told her she had a legion of spirits with her. Bother, she had headaches 
all the time, could barely function, you know. So, and it took years and years and years for them to heal her. So it's, it's just such a variety of things that are happening there. The other thing is a mental hospital. I was fortunate enough that uh, in the town, very near the Casa, there is a, a psychiatric hospital. And I ended up going there once to see what it was like because they were once again helping the mentally ill. Um, and what it, they, were do, they were doing it through a seance because with spiritism, they believe in teaching what the spirits talked about. And a lot of that has some Christian overtones to it. Very good information, very helpful. Um, and at the same time, they know about how to do the disobsessions. So they do this in seances. They'll start out by reading a little bit from the Gospel According to Spiritism is the book that they use. And then the person will read a little, then he'll speak a little. And so all of this is to um, help the people to understand what's going on. But interestingly enough, what I discovered is it's not just the people in the bodies who are being taught, but it's the spirits with them. So when they're doing the speaking and what have you, it's not just for the people in the room, it's for the spirits who have attached to them so that they get educated, which I thought was very interesting. At any rate, they do this uh, work once a week and they'll turn off all the lights after they have done this talk and what have you, and then the mediums will incorporate the spirits. And they'll have a stack of folders for the people that are there in the hospital who needing help. And I asked the doctor at one point, I said, how do you know which ones um, need help? And he said, well, what I do is I ask them to give me the files of all of those who are considered psychotic. So he's got this stack of files of the psychotic folks. And I don't think anyone knows who's being worked on or anything else, but they work on them. And they do it by having the spirits incorporate into the mediums who are sitting around a table in the dark in a seance um, situation. And they have the spirit tell its story. And I was really struck by the fact that so many times the story was one where they were not able to forgive. Because they couldn't forgive someone in their life or what have you, or a situation, they would get stuck. They couldn't move on. They, and so they would have to be uh, spoken with and the higher level spirits would speak to them and what have you and take them along. But there were other times where there were very angry spirits. They would come in and they would be like, you know, and then they would have to talk them down and calm them down and what have you. So there were a large variety of different situations where the spirits had gotten stuck. And spirits can get stuck very, very easily. I knew of a situation where there was someone who was very Christian, very much against spirits and what have you, but totally involved in religion. Uh, and at one point had actually said, I can't wait to die and go and be with God. Well, this person died. And it was someone that I knew. And I was concerned because I knew what the belief was and I was not at all sure that was going to work so well for them. <laughs> so. Um, I offered in my mind, I said to this person, you know, if you ever need help, let me know. A year and a half after they died, I was there in Palmelo, and I was doing some of the psychography. And when I do psychography, when they do psychography, they bring through these beautiful messages, you know, saying all this for the group and what have you, and Jesus and Mary and, and all this sort of thing. When I do psychography, <laughs> I get these spirits who are going, what am I doing here? I don't want to be here. What's going on? I'm writing all this down as they're telling me what's going on, you know. But what the reason they come to me is because of the work that my guides and I do is to help these souls to move along. And so therefore they're coming to me because they too want help, but they're giving me their story. So I'm, I'm enjoying doing this. I, I love helping them. And one night this woman, my friend, shows up and she goes, Oh, what's going on? I don't know. I've been looking for God everywhere. I can't find him anywhere. Can you please help me? 
and they did. They absolutely did. They took her away, you know, but she, and I, I had asked a, a, psych, a, a medium about this person and she checked on her and she said, she's very stubborn. And it was true. And that's what happened. She stubbornly believed that she was going to be with God when she crossed over. And so no matter who showed up, she was like, no, 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 you're not God, uh -uh, no. This is how easy it is to get stuck. And this was a good person. This was a good person. But when our beliefs, they can get us stuck. And when we're stuck in our beliefs, it's hard to move forward. So let me think what else. Let's take a moment and see what, how did all of you feel when we uh, did, uh, closed our eyes for a few minutes with the energy? Does anyone have anything they want to share, anything that they noticed or what have you? It wasn't very long. So. Um, I feel it, I still feel it. I feel it as a kind of density, you mm -hmm. know, around my seventh chakra in here and it's just, um, I, I am used to feeling my guides, it doesn't feel like my guides, but it does feel like a density, it feels fine. Good. I'm just noticing. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sensitive to it. Yes. Well, I, you know, I told you that I was in Brazil too, studying yeah. with, you know, the, the same, like the same endocrinologist that you were studying with. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've witnessed about a half a dozen disobsessions. Mm -hmm. and the mediums tend to work in groups of 14, and they've been training together for years, and they've developed a relationship with the counseling spirits that they work with, uh -huh. because the counseling spirits do most of the work, because they have a much broader, mm -hmm. they see the bigger picture better. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, I've, I've seen about a half a dozen of those, okay. and it is really amazing that you know, there were three types of uh, mediums that worked together in those groups. One of the three incorporate the, the spirit. Mm -hmm. They literally let themselves be possessed by the spirit. Mm -hmm. But they control it well enough that they don't lose complete control, but the spirit talks through them. Mm -hmm. Then the second group of the three types then start counseling the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the spirit might say, I've, it's all in Portuguese, but because I'm psychic and media, I can watch it happening. And the spirit might say, that person did terrible things to me when I was alive, and now he's happy, and he's wealthy, and God's not punishing him, so I've got to punish him. Okay. And that's wow. where okay. then the, the, uh -huh. the mediums talk, yes. no. <laughs> punishment to God. In fact, mm -hmm. let us show you what you did to that person 500 years ago right. in that life uh -huh. and take them back. And then that, that spirit goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know I. And then that helps break the hole mm -hmm. with that person. Because if you think about it, even human beings can hold grudges for entire lifetimes. Yes. They uh -huh. die, you know, <clears throat> not forgiving people, hating people. And so that spirit then, after it dies, is carrying the same kind of energy. Uh -huh. And um, yes. so, yeah, I watched uh, these, these groups of mediums work together. And right. Thank you for like sharing that. They're finely tuned machine. <clears throat> yes. They're so good, and one time, I think um, yeah. I, I have someone else. That, yes. Thank you. I'm glad you did that because you gave me some information I didn't okay. know. Yes. Uh, so when I closed, I, just, I, I, I had a visual. Mm -hmm. So when I closed my eyes, um, this um, really deep rose uh, land uh, opened up, and then there was a. It led me down a path. That was the same deep rose. Um, so that's what I saw when I closed my eyes. Mm. Well, we obviously have some mediums with us tonight. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing most of you are mediums. <laughs> yes? I had one of them just come right out there. It was all about their eyes. They looked right into me. 
<laughs> and smiled, and it, they felt indigenous. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I felt I felt like there are a lot of um, beings here who are actually interested in your talk. <laughs> who, are, who are hanging around <laughs> this space? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chairs are filled up. Thank you. Uh, well, that, I, I'll tell you about this, okay? Um, that, uh, my friend, I loaned this book to her because I like it very much, and she just brought it back. And since it's here, we'll talk about this because um, this is a book about a Brazilian medium who is still alive. Mm -hmm. And for many years, he um, incorporated Dr. Fritz. Mm -hmm. and, and some of you may know, it looks like some of you know of Dr. Fritz. Dr. Fritz um, is probably the most famous doctor who incorporates in mediums. And he started, mm -hmm. he, lit, he died, he was a doctor who died in World War I. Mm -hmm. And 30 years later, he started incorporating in a medium. Um, I'm trying to remember how it happened. I can't recall how it happened that it started, but he started working through him. And it, he became really, really popular because of the work that he did. It was just astounding. And so Dr. Fritz has been having mediums. and. It, he has an interesting thing because what he does is after he chooses the medium, he tells the medium when he's going to die. Mm. And all of the mediums um, from 47 onwards um, were killed violently at the time when he told them they would be, okay? Well, this fellow was born in 1951. Mm. And he agreed to work with Dr. Fritz. But when it came time for him to die, he decided he didn't like that idea. <laughs> so he went to Hawaii and hid out during the time when he was supposed to die. <laughs> so Huben Sparia is his name, and he is still alive. He is still doing work, but he ended up not channeling Dr. Fritz for a whole lot longer after that, okay? <laughs> However, there are still people channeling Dr. Fritz. And um, there are a number of them in Brazil right now. There's a woman in the south of Brazil who is channeling him. There is a man in Palmelo who is channeling him. And because I was living in Palmelo, um, I started going to all these different centers because they have different, they have one where the woman does paintings of people. She'll paint your guides or whoever it is that comes through and she, her mediumship works that way. Then there is a man who is um, interested in Chinese medicine. So he has Chinese medical doctors working through him and he has a center. There's an Umbanda center there. I mean, Palmelo for a little town of 2,000 people has more <laughs> things going on than you can really imagine. And there's a medium who is incorporating Dr. Fritz, and he has his own center. He works on Saturday mornings, and since it was really convenient, I would go there every Saturday morning. I ended up meeting Dr. Fritz on my first trip to Palmelo, and he did a surgery on me, and then at one point I was invited to work in his infirmary one Saturday morning, and I did that, and that was really interesting. And then um, I was involved with the other center, and so I wasn't working with him, but the energy at his center was so incredible that I would go there every Saturday morning and I'd just stand there in the energy and thank Dr. Fritz, you know, for the wonderful energy. And sometimes I'd get a little healing or what have you, or energy um, boost. So um, I'll tell you what happened. I was in Brazil um, for six years until last October. And last October, I came back to Ashland. Um, out of the blue, just all of a sudden, they said, okay, you're done, go back to Ashland. So I came back here, and I, at the time that I was planning on coming back, I heard about the fact that uh, OLLI allows people to teach courses. So from Brazil, I applied to teach at OLLI in January, and uh, they was accepted, and in January, for January and February, I actually taught an Ollie course about all of this. 
And, <laughs> and the reason I taught that course is not because I love public speaking, because it's not the case at all, but I was hoping that maybe some of the people in that group would like to continue. And we have. We've now been meeting for, what is it, seven months. And after Ollie finished, we started meeting at the Presbyterian Church on Wednesday afternoons from 1 to 2. And what we're essentially doing is creating a current just like what they have in Brazil at John of God Center. And little by little by little, the energy is building and building and building. And people are having some amazing experiences. And we're really enjoying what's going on. In May, Dr. Fritz came and asked me if I was willing to let him work through me to do surgeries. And I said yes. And so I got a friend to loan me this book because I didn't know of this book. She loaned it to me and I read it and went, I'm in, I'm definitely in because Dr. Fritz is really incredible. He has done a number of surgeries on people that are really sort of amazing. And actually we have someone here tonight who might be willing to share. Um, would you be willing to share a little bit about your experience with yeah. Dr. Fritz and with The Current? Because well, first of all, I mean, The Current, my experience has been that The Current is so fantastic. It's so peaceful and it just, you can feel the energy like rising and becoming very uh, like visceral while you're in the current. Everyone's energy is really beautiful and then when it just gets magnified. So that alone was fantastic. But I had um, I had a really problem. I had a, a pretty severe bone spur on my right ankle and I was going to go have regular AMA surgery. I resorted to AMA surgery. <laughs> and. Um, and uh, Helene had mentioned that Dr. Fritz was doing surgeries, and um, yeah, so he <laughs> he was very terrific. And um, it, I, there's a two-week protocol that you do if you have a surgery, and um, it has to do with eating right and making sure that you're resting and basic good good things, healthy things. And I couldn't even walk to the post office. I mean, people here who know me, I couldn't walk to the mailbox to pick up my mail from the house. Mm -hmm. It was that bad. And recently I just got back from a trip with my daughter and I'm like going up hills and doing all this and she said, Well, you're you're doing a lot better than I thought you would be doing. And it's all it's all mm. Dr. Fritz, so mm. yeah. Wow. Mm. But I did tell him it was really cute because after that I was so grateful and I kept saying, Oh thank you, thank you, thank you. But then um in the in the current that we've been doing with Eileen, um the the guides will come and they'll ask you and Dr. Fritz was there and he's like is there anything I can help you with today? And I said, oh, well, this and, and this. And, and then he goes, okay, well, let's just pick it, pick one or two of those, and we'll save the rest for some other time. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. But he asked. I took my chance. You know. <laughs> anyway, it's just so beautiful. There's just so much, um, such a huge outpouring of love and lightness. It just feels like all the thick heaviness was just like lifted up. So, yeah, it's really beautiful. Thank you, Diane. She reminded me of something that I haven't mentioned, which is the beings who are working with us say, ask for everything. It turns out if we don't ask, they don't have permission to help us because we have free will. So, I, oh boy, I have asked for everything I can think of and they still come up with things that they do for me that I didn't even remember. But it is one of the things. Um, yes. Uh, do you fully incorporate Dr. Fritz when, you, when he works with you, through you? Uh, because I worked in Umbanda for so long, it's very easy for me to incorporate the spirits. Um, Dr. Fritz um, incorporates in me to an extent, but what, he, what I noticed he does more than that is he harvests ectoplasm. The thing about working with spirits is they need a material that, uh, in order to work with us. They're on the other side. They don't have anything to work with, so they need a medium, 
but they also need material. And ectoplasm is something that comes out of mediums, out of their mouth, out of their nose, out of their ears. And this material is something that they, that they need to use in order to heal us. And so what I notice most is that he uses ectoplasm. He just, you know, he's harvesting ectoplasm from me as he's doing it and he's showing me what he's doing or what have you. So, and in my case, I don't have to incorporate the spirits because in my practice, I don't incorporate the spirits. It's not really a good idea to incorporate spirits unless you're in a super safe space. And that's what they create in Umbanda and in these centers where they're working, a really strong, safe place. Because one of the other problems with mediumship is people inviting spirits in when they don't know if they're the right kind of spirits. And if you read the medium's book, what I got out of the medium's book is test your spirits, test your spirits, test your spirits. It is crucial to test your spirits because otherwise you can get into trouble. And incorporating spirits when it's not a, a really safe and protected space is not a good idea. People do it and then they get themselves into trouble. But when I work, what my guides do is they work through my chakras. So I don't have to incorporate any spirits. They just work through my chakras. They stand behind me, work through my chakras, and do the work that way. So that's how I'm kept safe when I do this in my practice. It's a different thing when we're at the church because that's a safe space. Um, he does incorporate in me a little bit then. Um, now I want to mention that this uh, that we're doing at the church on Wednesday afternoons is open to the community. I'm re this is a community. This is my community service, and it's what I love to do. And I want it to grow, and I want more people to be served by it and to be helped by it. So I invite you all, if you're available on Wednesday afternoons at one o'clock, we meet at the Presbyterian Church. Um, and feel free to join us. It's, it just lasts an hour and we're sitting in the current just quietly with some music playing. And I do go around and work on the people, you know, while you're all sitting, um, just because I enjoy working on people. Um, so that's one of the things. Now, does anyone have any questions? I mean, I've told you a lot. There's a lot more I could tell you, but questions are helpful at times. Yeah, hi. Um, I was curious if you would talk a little bit about the Orishas. I read on the flyer that you studied that. And how that is different to work with them with the healing. Yes. The yes. Umbanda is the Orishas. That's what they work through, is Umbanda. And this is direct from Africa. Uh, this is the syncretization that I was talking about. And the Orishas, um, they have, they're all. Umbanda is an earth-based religion. It's all about um, the earth connection to it. And the Orishas are the beings that are um, representative of the earth. Um, one is the ocean, one is the rivers, one is the storms, one is the rocks, one is the beach, one is the forest. It's all these different Orishas and they're doing different um, you know, different things. And this is who they work with in Umbanda. And it, with Umbanda, it's so much fun to see how they do it because they sit on a little stool and then they um, will, the spirit will make its mark on the board that's in front of it. And then they will throw knives or pointers <laughs> into it and uh, light a candle and they'll have some liquid there. And these are the earth elements that they're working with that they need to do the work in Umbanda. That's how it works there. So it's more complicated. Um, is there anything more specifically that you'd like to know about with them? I know a little bit about them and okay. it feels like it's invigorating because they're the forces of nature yes. and um, Oshun is a quality of the, the sweet waters and cleansing and it feels like connecting <coughs> with them is not so specifically seeking for healing but there's some, some kind of invigoration um, of that element in nature that you're connecting with and um, I'm curious 
because I love singing to them and it just gives me energy and mm -hmm. it's fun and it's joyful and mm -hmm. interact with the forces of nature. So um, that's a practice that seems to be not so focused on healing and ailment, but of in maybe increasing vitality. I don't know if that's <coughs> all the right impression. <laughs> all of these things, yes, yeah. absolutely. And like I say, it feels real wonderful to incorporate these high level spirits. It just, it is, it's very healing just doing that. Which is why it's really spreading across South America because the, pe the young people who are getting on board with Umbanda are so very excited about the whole thing and it really is spreading um, to a very great extent. Did you have a question? Oh, where is this doctor's location? Is it a physical oh, Dr. Fritz? Uh -huh. you no, Dr. Fritz is a spirit. Oh, it's a spirit. Yes, he died in World War I, the yeah. actual mm -hmm. being who was named Dr. Fritz. Mm -hmm. You don't go to it? No, no, no. Dr. Fritz just um, does the work. That, yes, he's a spirit. So when she had her surgery, how, did you go to an office? or? No, no. Uh, he worked with me at the um, Wednesday group um, mm -hmm. to work on her. <laughs> yes. Do you feel comfortable doing a little bit, a little like clearing for everybody right now, if they give permission? And what I, what I am willing to do is ask them. Mm. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Those who are with us yes. to do a little clearing on us. Is everyone open to that? If you're not, just say you're not interested yes. and just sit here peacefully and quietly. But yes, I will ask, we will ask and uh, we'll just sit and everyone close your eyes. Um, please don't cross your arms or legs or hands. Just keep everything separate. And we'll just see about running some current and letting the spirits do what they choose to on each and every one of you. Well, it looks like quite a few of us are back, so we'll continue. Um, are there questions that anyone has? Anything they'd like um, further information about or clarification? Anything at all? Yes? So on, <clears throat> on Wednesday, um, I can't be there promptly at 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Does that interrupt the flow if I would arrive by 1.15? Um, you can always come in and have a seat. Just come in, close your eyes, don't cross anything, um, and sit in the energy, yes. Mm -hmm. But as long as there's a chair available, you know, <laughs> it, it won't disturb anyone. Okay. I read a really good study about a mental hospital in southern Brazil that had tremendous success with treating schizophrenia in that they treated it as spirit possession. Yes. And one of the primary tools that they used was the community and the family. That the family had to be treated, the community around the patient had to be treated, the whole group had to be treated. Is there Anything that can be moved. Is there any analogies to that? Or? Um, you know, it makes sense to me. I haven't heard of that. But when I think about Palmelo, this town that is full of these mediums who are helping others all the time, and they really are um, looking to help everyone. And you know, you come, and yes, the family members are there, and what have you, and they too are there, and receiving, and what have you. And the more that can be expanded, the more health, lasting health, that will exist for the person. So yes. Yeah, that, that's, they treated schizophrenia as spirit possession, but as a weakness within a community group, with yeah, the spirit attached to the individual. That's interesting. That may have been a specific situation, um, in that case, there was a group in the south of Brazil as well, a spiritist, and they realized that, that there had been a huge battle in this one area, and they realized it because there were so many spirits who were still stuck there. 
because of being war and trauma, so many of them got stuck. And like a hundred years later, they're still there on that property. Mm -hmm. And so the community decided that they were going to help all these spirits mm -hmm. to move on. And they did. They really focused on it. They had everyone in the group working on it. And they were able to clear that whole area mm -hmm. of all the spirits. And speaking of this, um, I worked with an exorcist. And he told me that the pandemic on the earth is one of spirits being stuck. He said, we're walking around with spirits two feet deep on the planet. Mm -hmm. And there are more and more and more of them. We also have the situation, I've been told, that you know how they put people on morphine these days as they're getting ready to go? It's not a good idea because what happens is the person gets stuck because they're not mentally competent to recognize what's happening to them more and more and more. We don't do the rituals we used to do when people die. Those rituals had meaning and purpose and they help the spirit to move on. Mm -hmm. We're not doing any of this. People are getting stuck. Like I, he said, it's a pandemic that we're dealing with here. And these spirits need help, and we need help, because when they don't have a home, they will attach to people. That's how all these problems mm -hmm. get started. And mediums being sensitive with open auras, and what have you, the spirits mm -hmm. just move in, and then you've got schizophrenia, and then you've got all these other problems. Um, so we really, the more aware of this we are, the more we can work with it and help these spirits to move along, the better it is for all of us. Yes. Is there something that we can do to stay protected on a daily basis? The strongest protection that I know of is saying the rosary. Oh, wow. And you don't have to be a Catholic to say the rosary. Actually, I grew up Catholic, and I was sort of like, oh, no, thank you, you know. But I go to Brazil, and I hear the rosary said in Portuguese, and I fell in love with it. Do you know I've been saying the rosary for the last 22 years because it's so beautiful in Portuguese, and it's part of why I have so very much protection. Because I've said a lot of rosaries over the years. That's the one that is at the, the top of the list, so far as I'm concerned, and from what I can understand, because I've spent a lot of time trying to answer that question myself. <laughs> Being a medium, you know. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But no, no other suggestion that people have ever made is as powerful as the rosary. Mm -hmm. Okay. You said test your spirits. Yes. How do you test your spirits? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, we all have intuition, okay? And I don't know, sometimes you're trying to make a decision and you're going, well, I should do this, you know. But, you know, um, I'd really rather do this. And, you know, you're going back and forth and you can't decide. And some part of you says, oh, I don't know about this. It's a, I don't know about this. That's where you want to do the work. Because as long as there's any part of you that's saying, eh, I'm not sure, don't do it. Mm -hmm. it. It's just the best way to test your spirits. You know, I've been in situations, they have put me through my paces with this. I mean, I've had so many situations where I had gotten involved with the wrong thing or had showed up at the wrong thing, and they showed me so many times, you know. But what they basically kept doing is they kept having me have experiences where I had to choose. And what I started recognizing is if there is the least little bit of a doubt within me, do not do it. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to test your spirits, mm -hmm. is just when you get 100%, then go with it. If you don't get 100%, wait or um, do not do it. And sometimes waiting, uh, things will shift. But basically, you have to be 100% because otherwise you can get in trouble. It's very easy to do and very hard to get out of once you get in trouble, especially in our society, because we don't have the awareness that they do in Brazil on how to help with these situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
maybe we've done it. <laughs> well, I'm assuming that we shouldn't, as a person that doesn't know much about it, shouldn't be trying to help anyone move on. Or well, no, that's not necessarily true. Helping a person to move on is something that you definitely do want to do. That's why they had all the rituals when people died, you know, why they said prayers for them. Um, I'm not much on prayers because when uh, the way I was taught to uh, pray was to ask for what I wanted. But I don't think that's the way it works because that's me telling God what needs to happen. <laughs> And that doesn't strike me as the best thing. So what I do is I ask for the best and highest. And I, if there's someone that I want to be helped, what I do is I ask the divine to bless that person. Because that step, that's me not telling the divine what to do, but please bless this person. And every person is worthy of being blessed. <coughs> So that's what I do when I want to help someone. I ask the divine to bless them. And the nice thing about asking blessings is, when I ask a blessing for another person, the divine sends the blessing through me to the other person. So it's a big win-win. Yeah. It's, it's the big win-win because everyone is blessed. And I've had family and other people that I wanted to work on and they were saying no. And so I'd start asking blessings for the person. It might take a month of just doing it whenever I thought of them, but all of a sudden after a month I could work on the person. They were clear that much just because I asked blessings for them. So if you've got someone who is transitioning and might be having trouble, those blessings will help them hugely. It is nice, isn't it? Yes. You mentioned spirits are stuck, but they need to move on. Yes. What does that mean? Well, where do they go? Well, that's the whole thing. Um, they go to different places, and it's really hard to know exactly where a person is. Um, the person I was talking about, you know, I had a feeling that they would get stuck, they did. Where they were uh, during that year and a half that they were waiting, I do not know. But in Brazil, they have, you know, it's sort of like um, hell, purgatory, heaven, you know, the Catholics, that they've got something similar with the Brazilians. But how to know where a person is, I don't, you know, I couldn't say much about that. I, I was listening to something uh, just recently that when when one dies uh, violently or unexpectedly, yes. you know, then there's where the spirit gets stuck. And so that um, and I had a friend who went to Scotland in, last fall uh, with with a medium and uh, a couple of other women, and they went to Culloden where the big battle was. Mm -hmm. And they actually worked with these stuck spirits okay. that were from, you know, hundred years ago. Hundreds of years ago. Um, to and and I it's just so interesting. There's oh, and then then I was reading something uh, this last year where her husband had been in uh, Desert Storm and his his orders was to be in a situation where he had to kill all these villagers and children. Yes. And she, because she had, I guess all of us being medium, but she was getting that she was the one to help them find their places. Oh. You know, I mean, when, when okay. this came around that she okay. could actually then, then be that, that resource for them to, to get unstuck of that, this bomb dropping or this mm -hmm. happening and, and then they find and then they find where they're to go. Okay. They, they find yes. their home mm -hmm. and get to go back home. Yes. You're absolutely right. 
about when the person dies suddenly. Yeah. Because it's a trauma there. They're not expecting yeah. it. They're not prepared. Yeah. And so they don't always recognize what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so they get end up getting stuck. It's very, very mm -hmm. common. Yeah. It's one of the things. I also, I'm glad you brought up the uh, war because one of the major problems with PTSD is a person gets stuck because, with PTSD because of soul loss. Mm. Soul mm. loss is so much what is behind PTSD. Mm. And if enough of the soul leaves and cannot get back in after the trauma is finished, mm. then you have major soul loss. Mm. And if the soul isn't brought back in, Nature abhors a vacuum, and so all mm. these spirits start trying to get in to the space where the soul once was. And that's what PTSD patients often end up with. They are, have a situation where they're ungrounded. They're, they're, because you cannot ground if you have too much soul loss. It's mm. not possible. Mm. It's, it's something I have experienced this and I know of someone else who has. The minute the soul comes back in, you can ground again. But when the soul's out, you can't ground. Mm -hmm. So we have PTSD sufferers walking around, unable to ground, um, feeling totally not themselves, and having nightmares about all these beings trying to get into them. Okay, Not surprising they turn to drugs or alcohol or any of the other things because we don't have a way of dealing with them because soul retrieval is a shamanic thing. It's one of the things that we work with. We work with PTSD patients, um, you know, getting the soul back in again. And it's an incredible difference that it makes when that happens. I mean, I've had some really amazing um, situations. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, absolutely. But yes, anytime someone drops dead from a heart attack or some of these other things, that's when they need our prayers because they are really in danger of getting stuck. Mm -hmm. When you have an illness and you know you're passing, then you can prepare for it. But it's very different when it's a trauma like that. Mm -hmm. I've, I've worked with some vets who were having a lot of trouble because they're, they're you know, soldiers that they were fighting with, the ones that died sometimes will attach to them because yes. they were their best friend. Yes, and absolutely. And so they're carrying that around. Right. And it helps to be able to clear that mm -hmm. too for for some vets. Absolutely, yes. That's, that's a, yeah, I hadn't thought of that, but yeah. it's a good point. I can see that. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to say one thing. Uh -huh. and this is about, I, I didn't see because of my neck, I didn't see who was talking about the glaring. Um, um, I, I, they're just saying that um, they're, every night before you go to bed, it's a good idea to just go through each of your chakras and fill it with light mm -hmm. and breathe out anything that's not yours. Just send everything back to where, wherever it's going to go and just make sure that fill yourself with a column of light and blast it out just so you're always yourself. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. That's great. That short healing that, that you did, that was really nice. Toward the end of it, I felt a shift, and it was like there was this kind of energy matrix that included everybody, and it was doing something beyond what I have experienced before in, in healing. And I don't know if you experienced that, um, that something shifted toward the, toward the very end, and it was very powerful. It was powerful for me too. You know, I'm just standing here like this going, ooh. <laughs> Anyone else want to share what mm. they experienced during that? Mm. Mm. Any other questions? Um, I do know, like, I'm sensitive to energy yes. and so forth, uh -huh. and can call it forth or not. Yes. But I didn't, but I did ask. You know, for healing, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Okay. And I mean, I can still feel it very heavily into my body still. Mm -hmm. And I also, my brother passed unexpectedly and suspiciously. So they had forced head trauma. They don't know how. 
and when I arrived, because he was in Florida, um, I could sense that he was still there, and especially because in his room there was no movement, and I didn't sleep in, in the room and so forth. But he had a, a collection of cans on the window seal, and all of a sudden the one fell. Huh? I could hear it, and I walked in there. I go, Will, you're still here. And so I had an Irish friend who was in <coughs> Ireland, and she worked with people. And so I asked her, you know, if she could help him. And then I asked the Divine Mother to help him move on. And then when she called me back, she said, the Divine Mother came and helped him, and he has crossed over. Yes. Yes. With intention, we can do a lot. I mean, uh, we're all mediums, and so, you know, our intentions are powerful. And so if we want to help someone or we need something, our intention is what um, we work with. Mm. That's, a, that's the main thing. You know, your intention. Because everything follows your intention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.